Welcome back. Well, we have Dr. Ahmad Abu Abbas here, who is here on behalf of Providence Mission Hospital. Well, welcome. So nice to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, nice to see you in person this yeah. time. I'm glad you could visit us in our studio. This Thank is great. You. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're very busy over there. And, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. And Definitely. I think people are, you know, you've got the holidays coming up. So it's you really want to make sure that you get everything in before then. Of course. Um, so before we get into our subject matter, which is pancreatic cancer, I would like you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell me about your background and how you got into this field. Sure. Uh, well, uh, I'm from the Middle East, and uh, I came to the U.S. for training. I did general surgery, and I did then afterwards uh, a fellowship in hepatobiliary surgery, which is liver and pancreas surgery mm -hmm. in Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I've been in Southern California f since 2018. Okay. I'm the director of hepatobiliary surgery at Mission Hospital. Okay. And so was there any particular incident or maybe an instructor or someone that sort of steered you in the direction in which you are now? Of course. Uh, I mean, I always liked surgery, you know, uh, in medical school. But then during my surgery training, I always was uh, amazed by the liver and how complex those surgeries are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just like also humbled by pancreas cancer and liver cancer. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted, you know, to do those cases and help those patients. Right. Now, um, do you happen to have a statistic of how many people um, do get pancreatic cancer? Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, around 50,000, probably even more nowadays, maybe around 60,000 wow. cases every year wow. are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Uh, I think we've been seeing, I've, I've been personally being seeing it more often even in younger patients. Really? Okay. Sometimes in their 40s. So what causes pancreatic cancer? Uh, like most cancers, we really don't know the exact reason. There are genetic and there's also some environmental causes. Basically, one normal cell goes crazy and mm -hmm. starts dividing uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. And that forms a mass. Yeah. And that mass basically causes alteration of the structures around it, causes pressure. And then those usually, they can split and go to different parts of the body. Wow. And, and what is the purpose of our pancreas? Well, the pancreas is a very, import, a very important organ. You can live without a pancreas. <clears throat> Sometimes we actually remove the whole pancreas. Wow. But uh, the pancreas has two very important uh, roles. The first one is it secretes enzymes to help us digest food. So someone without a pancreas will need to take pills. Actually, we have the pancreatic enzymes in pills nowadays. Oh, okay. They need to take them with meals. Okay. The other thing, it secretes insulin. And another hormone called glucagon, which is actually cause, does the opposite effect of insulin. So mm -hmm. uh, they balance the sugars in the body. Oh. So for someone without a pancreas, they will have a very, very, we call it a brittle diabetes, which is really very, uh, they, their sugars can go down very quickly mm -hmm. or they can be super elevated. They'll have to live on insulin. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So those are really the two main uh, now when, functions. When when someone is uh, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, I think a lot of people think, oh, this is it. There's no cure. There's no help for me. How, how do you help ease those patients? Sure. I mean, definitely when someone mm -hmm. gets that diagnosis, and unfortunately, sometimes I have to tell patients. Most of the time, as the surgeon, usually the patient comes to me already has been given the diagnosis. But a lot of times I see the patient and honestly, most of the time, even before they get a biopsy, we, when you just see, when you talk to the patient and take the history from them, and when we do a CT scan, we know that that's cancer. So mm -hmm. sometimes I have to deliver the bad news to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, unfortunately, pancreatic cancer is, is a bad disease. It's yeah. very aggressive. It, I would say most patients succumb to the disease eventually. I see. It depends on the timing. Right. And on the stage of the cancer. So is there symptoms with it? Uh, that's one of the reasons pancreatic cancer is bad. Usually the symptoms start late, like when the cancer has already advanced. So the cancer starts inside the pancreas, and it's very tiny, and it's deep in the pancreas. And most patients go without symptoms mm -hmm. until that cancer has grown enough where it pushes on other structures. Mm -hmm. So the first, usually for one of the first signs is patients and that's, I see a lot of those patients that come to me, uh, someone in their 70s, and they have new discomfort or pain in the, the pancreas is in the upper abdomen area okay. right here. 
So they have new discomfort or pain in that area or dyspepsia or reflux. Mm. And a lot of times for a couple months, those symptoms are dismissed either, either by the patient themselves, sure. you know, they ignore those symptoms or sometimes they see their physician and also, you know, like no one thinks pancreatic cancer if someone has a little stomach upset. Nope. So one of the really uh, signs that are concerning and they can happen is when uh, the bile duct is a tube that connects the liver to the pancreas. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the tumor blocks the bile duct, there is backup of bile in the body and then the patient's yellow turns, uh, eyes oh, turn yellow. Okay. Their urine turns dark. Okay. So those are one of the signs. Uh, okay. So those are serious. When someone comes in with those signs, those are serious. Then weight loss. With most cancers, there is a weight loss, yeah. especially with pancreatic cancer. When there is severe pain, sometimes they have severe pain in that area, but also the pain, because the pancreas is all the way in the back, mm. sometimes they experience back pain. Okay. So when there is severe pain, that's actually not a good sign. It means the cancer has grown significantly mm. to cause mm. pain in that okay. area. You know, uh, is there anything in particular we can do to prevent pancreatic cancer? Uh, I mean, uh, we are starting to have some leads in genetic testing and like test individuals at high risk, but really those are a minority. We're still, we still have a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. still very early. So unfortunately at this time for most patients, there is no okay. screening per se, okay. but hopefully we'll get there someday. So if you, if you uh, suspect or if you diagnose somebody that does have pancreatic cancer, there's various treatments that they can do, right? Of course, uh, definitely. So uh, the, the main potential for a cure for someone who has pancreatic cancer to be cured is to have the cancer removed. Okay. So, uh, and that's the, been the traditional way of treating those is to do surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, so someone gets imaging, we see that the tumor is still confined to the pancreas, it hasn't spread anywhere and it, is, it hasn't involved major blood vessels that are in the area, mm -hmm. then the patient usually undergoes a surgery. Got it. Uh, this surgery is, uh, when the tumor is in the head of the pancreas, the surgery is called a Whipple procedure. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a surgeon mm -hmm. named Whipple mm -hmm. who started this. This was a very morbid surgery when they started. They used to do it in two stages. Oh boy. Uh, and it, was, it had a high, very high mortality rate. Nowadays, the surgery has become more routine. Mm -hmm. uh, and with time, we discovered that actually, even if the tumor is small, those patients already have pancreatic cells in their body. Mm. So they realized even if someone had a surgery for a small tumor, they come back months later with tumor elsewhere in the liver and different right. organs. So, they, so we added chemotherapy. So for everyone who uh, has pancreatic cancer, mm -hmm. nowadays almost everyone gets chemotherapy. There is, uh, and since we think that pancreatic cancer is a systemic disease nowadays, even if it's small, there is ongoing research of giving chemotherapy before surgery. Oh. Actually giving chemo, sometimes giving some of the chemo, like, like splitting the chemo, giving chemo for three months, mm -hmm. the cancer, the actual cancer will shrink. And if there's any cancer cells in, in the blood, they yeah. hopefully will be killed with the chemo. Then the patient has the surgery and then they receive some more chemo. Oh, I see. So, Hopefully there is some, and actually nowadays we have much better chemo for uh, pancreatic cancer. Right. Well, there, there, a lot of this is uh, related to the precision medicine that's been going on for so long now where you can, I know they're doing that for breast cancer where you can identify certain, um, certain cancers and, and it helps with that. Definitely. So that's awesome. One other thing I wanted to mention is that um, robotics, it, it really can help the surgery and the recovery, right? Of course. Uh, so as I talked to you about the Whipple procedure, it's a very extensive uh, surgery. Uh, the pancreas is surrounded by very important structures, surrounded by uh, the duodenum, which is the first part of the intestine. There's the bile duct that enters the pancreas. Mm -hmm. So we have to cut all these together in one piece to remove the cancer. Wow. And there are major blood vessels in the area, so that can make it a, a dangerous uh, surgery. Mm -hmm. So uh, for years and still most Nowadays, most centers in the United States, they do the surgery via an open procedure. They make a big open incision in the belly, put mm -hmm. their hands in there, and do the procedure. In the last few years, there has been an interest in doing the same procedure using a surgical robot. Right. The surgical robot basically is a machine. It doesn't, it's contrary to the belief, it's not like a robot, it doesn't do anything yeah. itself. It's just like a machine that actually you can make few tiny holes in the body, 
put those instruments inside, mm -hmm. and then you go sit as if you're driving a car, mm -hmm. and you drive that machine. And, right. it's, uh, and the machine has a lot of advantages. First, you have small incisions, so the patient really recover faster. They don't have much pain. Right. It has nine times magnification, and you can reach deep areas that it's even hard to reach with your own hands. Uh, and that really translates. So you can do the same, exactly the same surgery. Instead of cutting a patient open, mm -hmm. doing it through small incisions, patients uh, do much better That's than right. the open procedure. They have right. less pain, less hospital stay. Those patients also, as I told you, they need to get chemotherapy. Because right. even if, so if they have the surgery, it's uh, preferable to start chemo as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. If they have a big surgery and they have issues with healing, right. then that delays the chemo. Mm -hmm. And we really, we don't want to delay the chemo more than two months after surgery, okay. or else there is a risk of the cancer coming back. Right. Right. So the robotic approach has uh, really made recovery faster. Mm -hmm. Patients are going back to uh, are starting on chemo like within a month. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing robotic uh, Whipple procedure since 2020. Okay. So uh, I, I was trained to doing it the open uh, approach. The opens that's how I learned it in training. Yeah. But I jumped on the robotic uh, as soon as 2015. I did a lot of robotic surgeries and I've been doing robotic whipples since 2020. Mm -hmm. We have a very uh, big series by now. We've done a lot of those surgeries and we help a lot of patients. Okay. Uh, also, I've been actually going around the country teaching other surgeons how wow. to do this uh, approach robotically because right. there is definitely evidence that it is a better surgery than mm -hmm. the open and everyone now wants to learn that approach, even older surgeons that mm -hmm. have done it only open right. all their lives. Right. Well, as you mentioned, it's great recovery for uh, the patient and uh, a little bit better for them in the long run. Well, definitely. thank you so much. Of I really course. appreciate your thank time. Thank you for having me. And then maybe next time when you come back, we'll talk a little more about the genetic testing. Sure, definitely. All right, thank, thank you. you. If you want more information about anything that we've discussed, you can certainly go to the website on the screen, which is providence.org forward slash mission cancer, or you can call them at 949-364-1007. We'll be right back. <laughs>